Hello and welcome to Sutton Brain Hub. My name is Charlie and today we'll be taking a look at the hippocampus. So let's start with an overview of where the hippocampus can be found, what it is and some important pathway information. Anatomically, the hippocampus can be found on the medial undersurface of the temporal lobe as a folded section of the cortex. Make sure you can identify it on a specimen in the lab. If you hear the broader term, the hippocampal formation, this also refers to the dentate gyrus, the subiculum, and the CA1 to 3 cell fields. These are a series of cornu aminous areas filled with densely packed pyramidal cells. It's important also to mention the anterorhinal cortex, which is an afferent input into the hippocampal formation, carrying olfactory, visual, and auditory information. And finally, in this overview, the fornix is an important efferent bundle of fibres from the hippocampus, which forms part of the limbic system. But what does the hippocampus actually do? Primarily, it's involved in learning and memory, in particular in memory consolidation. And as the name suggests, this is when your memories are made more permanent and structured after initial acquisition. The process of turning these immediate short-term memories into long-term memories involves a complex biochemical event cascade called long-term potentiation. So now let's take a look at the hippocampal formation from a superior transverse view. The top of the screen here represents the anterior aspects of the brain. Firstly, let's orientate ourselves with regards to the internal capsule and basal ganglia on the right-hand side. Remember that the basal ganglia are formed of the globus pallidus, the putamen and the caudate nucleus. Now, if we look at the left-hand side of the brain, we can see the hippocampal formation lateral to the thalamus just behind the amygdala and overlying the lateral ventricle. This diagram does well to evidence how intrinsically linked the hippocampal formation is with the fornix and therefore the limbic system in general. The limbic system regulates some of the brain's most important features and is comprised of many structures that can be seen here. These include the amygdala, the hippocampus, the thalamus and hypothalamus, the basal ganglia and the cingulate gyrus. Now, let's take a look at the more familiar cross-sectional view of the hippocampal formation. A cross-section of the hippocampal formation is the more commonly viewed orientation of these structures, as it enables us to point out some key features. One of these key features, which we'll point out first, is the dentate gyrus. Unlike the hippocampus, where the primary cells are pyramidal cells, in the dentate gyrus the primary cells are granule cells. We can also see here the CA3 and CA1 fields. The CA1 field is also known as Soma's sector, and is found closest to the subiculum. This image shown here shows a transverse section through the body of the hippocampus, dentate gyrus, choroid fissure and inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. The dentate gyrus is outlined as the inner red swirl and the outer red semicircle represents the CA sections from 4 to 1 going from in to out. Just superior to the CA sections we can find the choroid plexus and the optic tract. Feel free to pause this video and screenshot this image so you can learn the anatomical positions of these structures. So now, let's take a quick break before looking at some of the common hippocampal pathologies. So, now that we've taken a look at some of the key anatomy of the hippocampus, let's relate this to our clinical practice. Firstly, let's mention TLE, temporal lobe epilepsy. TLE seizures relate to changes in hippocampal function. However, whether TLE causes hippocampal damage is unknown. However, what is known is that the dentate gyrus is involved in neurogenesis and that TLE can negatively affect new neuron development. Secondly, we need to mention hippocampal atrophy. The hippocampus is vulnerable to atrophy and can shrink in size due to neurochemical or neurovascular alterations. Remember that neuritic plaques and tangles are the hallmark neuroanatomical characteristics of Alzheimer's disease. These changes are commonly observed in the hippocampal regions. Thirdly, Cushing's disease can be associated with the hippocampus due to the high number of glucocorticoid receptors in hippocampal networks. Stress can improve memory consolidation via emotional underscoring, however it can also impair specific information retrieval.
Finally, trauma and alcohol dependence can damage the hippocampus. Bilateral damage will often result in anterior grade amnesia, meaning a decreased ability to retain new information. So hopefully now you have a solid understanding of the anatomy, function, location and common pathologies of the hippocampus. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn more about the brain. Thank you for watching. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.